good afternoon uh, and welcome to the FX Daily Roundup, folks. Sorry about that. I was posting a chart in the uh, chat room regarding the euro yen. So um, uh, that's why a little bit of a just a pause here. Wanted to go in and uh, post that. Um, so we have gone and seen the euro bounce back. We actually had our bias chart support here at uh, 980. I thought we would dip down there. We didn't quite make it. And then we saw a really nice, uh, very nice pop back here. So I had it at 980, a little bit greedy on that entry, I guess, because we uh, stopped at um, right here was it? 9.91. Yesterday we had 10.07. I thought we'd make it down to 9.80. That would confluence with the dollar index coming up to our buy chart resistance at 9.72, uh, or I should say 98.72. Right in here. So I thought those two would come in together. So uh, we saw a nice little pop back here in the euro, but it's kind of fizzled out in here just a bit. Um, if you look at it on a 30-minute it actually had a, um, bear with me, a nice little uh, um, graystone uh, doji there. We'll go on and slide into that quickly. Bear with me. You can see here on the 30 minute. Um, I didn't catch any of these. I mean, I, I thought we'd get down. I was going to go in and come in that. I didn't know if you'd make it all the way down to 980, but I thought like I'd come in around 984. I missed that. And on this way back, this surprised me. We, we saw quite the swing back. I actually stepped in and picked up some gold. I actually had to add a little bit, and I was able to spin out okay. And actually, I was looking at what we had seen happen last week, and I was playing into that, thinking we might see the same thing, which was last week, you know, how we, we really fell apart. Um, and we broke to new lows. You see how we had this one? We broke to new lows. And then we rallied back $8 off of that, more than $8. You know what I mean? We had saw a pretty nice nice rally. Uh, and uh, well, actually, this is on this complete total move. But I'm saying off of here from 73 on up to, look at that. That was a very nice move up here. And I thought we might see the same thing. And uh, we still broke a little bit lower. We came back, but I was able to, to get out of that position. Actually, eventually, we, we retest the lows and moved higher. But unfortunately, I was able to get out with a um, you know a couple of couple of bucks in hand, but it wasn't all that great of a trade. And um, I had gone and danced around here a couple of times here in the crude oil. Crude oil's been kind of rather interesting here because we came down. If you look here on the crude oil, we actually uh, I talked this about this yesterday. Fifty two fifty five being a very good uh, daily level, saying that's that's a good you know area to assess your risk, and we actually made it down here yesterday and took it out by just a little bit and we saw a very nice rebound um and which really took us up here into this 53 i was looking for a resistance here at 53 i think 53.65 um and because we had a, a, a i think it was a 50 percent of this move back and um i uh, had a little bit of a long not much of a long but i was able to jump out and then play on the scalp short but it wasn't even for very much but one uh, other guy in the room uh, dk he he caught a nice move up here so we both you know, got out. He already exited a part of it on the move up to, I think it was 49, then took the rest of it here as we saw that nice confluence there with the FIB and also resistance level here. You can see that. So the resistance level came in at 58, but we had 50%. I think it was at 53.65. So really nice confluence. We saw a pretty good pair back. Um, this was actually a 50% back of this move. And I was fiddling around with gold. I missed that, but this was a good area right here, that 5302. And you saw this market come back. It's still trying to decide what it wants to do. Uh, one move that also was kind of frustrating here is in the gold market. We talked about this yesterday, saying how this market just wanted to, you know, it seemed like it's trying to go higher, couldn't figure out what it wanted to do. And if you saw this on a 15 minute chart earlier, there was a nice gravestone doji, just beautiful. If you think about what the market had done after that big old collapse, we're kidding here. We're just kind of like not knowing what the market wants to do. It finally bebops just above these highs here. Gives you a beautiful gravestone doji. I didn't even see this until this mark was way down here or something like that. Not way, way down here, but it already taken off. And I was like, and I usually don't, usually I look at 30 minutes or either in the case crude five minutes. Uh, but um, yeah, obviously the play with gold is going to be this 15 minute. Actually, one of the things I noticed here also was in the, when we came down here, you had a, um, 
a failed inverted hammer because we made new lows. And then basically it wasn't a perfect hammer here. And we saw a little bit more follow through, but not much. I was looking to maybe take a short against this. If it rallied up to almost 86, it didn't, uh, didn't quite make it because in the last scenario, uh, we rallied about a dollar past the 38% and then fell, fell back. Not a whole lot. I mean, we reasserted ourselves, but I thought that'd be a great area, but I guess because we've been, not twice that we didn't even make it to 38 percent we've been kind of sliding back here uh getting back in here into fx land um bear with me cables back up here stretching here at least on some thoughts that they may get the deal done um <coughs> excuse me um but we do have a, a resistance level coming in here at uh, 28 26 right here you can see that and I'll show it to you right there. You see, very nice resistance level. I heard 2826. If they're trying to pop up, but actually they've turned around and rolled over because now the headline's been like, oh, not so fast, folks. And so, like I said, it's all headline driven on this market uh, for right now. Uh, dollar index held against this 9820. I think we had 9814 for our buys chart. I thought they may have stretched down there, but they didn't. So we had 9814. So other than that, not a whole lot other than the peso. We've talked about the peso. Uh, we we're looking for that to go on and test those lows after that failed uh, rally. You know, we gave it, you know, great benefit of the doubt. And that worked out okay in the sense that we said, as long as it's above this 1923, uh, we were giving it the benefit of the doubt, and and then we held the 61%, and we saw a nice ride to 1985. We thought on the way back down, we'd probably pause around 1960 and then try and make another move back up. But we did, and we slid back, and we said, once it got past 1944, that's it. Over, done with. Bulls are gone. And um, hence, that opened the door for us to challenge 1923.6. We talked about it, you know, yesterday, and certainly we've seen that come today. Um, that's our bias chart support, actually, at 1923.6 with, with an overshoot of 1916. Okay, so uh, that's what we're looking here. Um, Dolly Yen, that's the other story. Let's see. Well, and we've mentioned this since the weekend. This is kind of like a mild rally if you look at where the spoos are at. So to me, I think uh, that um, on the stretch run up here, here's that old pivot. Remember that we talked about that? Shoot, we talked about it on the way up, on the way down, on the way back up. It's at 927. This is a huge, huge, huge pivot. Matter of fact, me and Dale talked about this early in – August, I guess it was when I said, hey, I think we could rally back up to the pivot and then it would fail. And we did, although, you know, to be quite honest with you, I haven't even done, I, will, I actually traded the dolly and actually I did trade it on Friday and I, I made a whopping 10 pips. But what I'm saying is I haven't, you would think, oh, well, God, maybe you did okay in these more, I haven't, I haven't even hardly even traded this dolly in at all, to be quite honest. But uh, we are pushing higher than I would have thought. You know, I thought this, we actually had uh, yesterday our buy chart resistance was 850. That kept in check. We kept the 850. They're pushing higher, but it's all about this 927. Obviously, with the spoos up here against that 3000 level. I guess if you wanted to be short, I mean, previously when we were up in here, we we're looking at 808. Um, this is not a bad area. 808, what am I saying? 908. So we're up here at this, uh, this uh, 886. So, but you know what your risk level is really, 927. You definitely don't want a daily close above 927 here on the, uh, on the dollar yen. Um, let's go on and just move into the other markets quickly. One of the things that helped push the euro higher, we've been talking about that since last week, was the bonds. We did have some inflation outlook or forecast that really sparked the euro. Um, let's move into that. We've been talking about this all last week. If you remember, uh, we talked about, I thought that the boons were really going to fall apart. And look, new lows. It's kind of funny that the euros kind of pull back because look at the boons. Just, and we said there's a whole lot of room to go here. Now, we're, actually, this is a pretty decent area of support right in here. You can see where the market bounced around backwards and forwards. But this has had, look at this, all the way back to January, it's had just an unbelievable run. Look at this. That's the reason why the euro has been so weak. 
Uh, but now we're seeing the boons start to give in. And one of the concerns we have with the boon since last week, I told you, I go, hey, look, the news from Germany is still coming out really bad. I mean, I think there was one news that came out not so bad. It was just a gentle surprise to the upside. But I said, hey, look, it's no longer responding to the bad news. And so henceforth, I thought we were going to drop. And I think I told you, I think Steve's been bearish for about a month. But it was here that you're saying, wow, it looks like we really might break. And we were actually trading it here when we highlighted it. Remember, we were trading here and I said, watch this line, this pink line. If we get beyond this, that's where you can open the door. Well, you can see we've really fallen hard beyond that. Now, we're a little bit overdone and you can see here. We Let's focus on this. You see a pretty key level. We bounce up against resistance. We kind of pause a little bit. We have like a little gravestone doji. We have this big old uh, move here, and then we kind of group again, and eventually we move higher. So just a little bit below this, we'll probably see some some reasonable, decent support. Basically, I would say demand value as far as if someone was short, they probably want to cover. And look, right there's pretty good value right there. 73.16, we're at 73.26, so we're just about there. We're knocking on the door. So I would expect to see a little bit of a bounce from there, but you can see we this is what we were last week when we talked about this, saying watch out a potential for this to break lower. And henceforth was my talk about the euro. I said, hey, watch out. We could see a pretty good nice bid in the euro because if the boons come off, remember the boons are what preceded the euro lower, Obviously, higher boon prices means, you know, lower boon yields. Um, Tenure yield is bumping up here. Boy, we've already had a pretty good phenomenal move against this here, and we're up here bumping up against the 61%. Crude oil, like I said, it's been kind of a mixed mash. Um, we talked about this, the importance of this 54.43 on the daily, or at least I was talking to those folks in the room. And we got above that on Friday, and this was the risk level, that $55. It actually turns out to be $54.88. And we're kind of like all over the place, bouncing around. Um, so if you had the opportunity to come in early in the morning, it seems like those are the, the better setups because when it gets late in the day, you're just kind of being held in check. And I'll give you a, a case in point. We'll move into the uh, five-minute chart on there. You see here the moves that we've had here in the uh, uh, <clears throat> in the crude oil. It had some okay moves here in the morning, and I told you about the 52.55 since yesterday. And I said, hey, that's a real good value level right there. You know, I, I mentioned one of the guys in the room had said asked about that. Uh, you know, how I look at the levels. I said oh, about Fibonacci, and I said, well, I kind of tie it in with my my levels, and then whatever the price action is. So when you look on a daily, that 52.55 looked like a nice area. We didn't quite make it there yesterday. So we actually did today, and we saw a nice move off of that. And challenging up here, which is the 50% of this entire move, I think it's 50%, which was 53.65. And then this move down here, this is unfortunate. I missed this. Uh, but this, I think 5302 was a 50% of this move back. And so that was going to give you an opportunity to bounce back. And now we're just kind of dead in the water right now. So that's what I'm saying. Some of the moves are they're happening early in the morning. And then after that, until we, until crude really knows what it wants to do. You see, we get these moves and then we just go dead. And then we start to make another move, set ourselves up for the next day in New York as we come out of Europe. And then we go dead again. I'm not sure what the heck's going on there, but... Anyway, uh, obviously, Spoo's still strong. Uh, we talked about this. The 2981 in the cash was a key level. We You see right here coming across right there? Let's kind of open this up just so you see a little bit closer. And um, right here, there's that 2981. You see these touches coming across? I'll show you right there. Right there. And that kept it in check. You see here the touches right here. And like I said, I always took, you know, people, you know, ask, uh, why do you put your support levels wherever, you know, and I'd say I never put them at the top or the bottom, who sold the top, who bought the bottom. I mean, how many people? So I put them across the bodies. And if you're doing kind of volume analysis, uh, anything like that, you, this is where the real volume is at. So you can actually, if you're using an FX, you can't really tell where the volume is, but if you uh, or assess where real volume is, unless you're using the, the futures market, but what you can do is when you put it across these bodies, that's where all the volume is at. So I put on here 2981. You can see on the return back, where we then run out of gas, 2981. But getting beyond this 2981, that really opened the door for us to light them up. And sure enough, they did. They goose those stops and they've added on here. I don't know if the sell market can get very much higher. We do have earnings uh, season or some earnings coming out. 
And um, I mentioned Joe Perry had mentioned, hey, you know, we have some earnings coming out. Said that may be a catalyst to knock this market down. I think we've squeezed some shorts out here. We'll see what the market does, but I think it'll be open to, you know, slide back. And obviously you'd be looking at this 29. 81. Uh, that's all we have here today. Like I said, in some markets, kind of quiet. We have taken a pretty good knock again in gold, and it's not recovering like the way it did the last time. This is a second hard knock on it, so maybe we do have to go in and move lower here. But that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us here on the European crossover. I mean, actually, the FX Daily Roundup. And have a great rest of the day trading in a quiet market.